Welcome back friends! In the previous tutorial, we finished coding our basic dialog player. Now it's time to add some bells and whistles, starting with variable injection. But what the heck is variable injection, and why do we need it? Well, most of our dialog is pre-written and static, but if we need part of the dialog to change dynamically according to the state of the game, we can use variables in our dialog text that resolve during runtime right before displaying to the screen. Alright, there's work to be done, so let's get to it. The first thing we need to think about is setting up a system to manage all of the variables that could potentially be used in the dialog player. For me, that system is the XP registry. Objects like a player class that have variables required by external systems like a dialog player are responsible for registering their variables with the XP registry. Each variable is associated with a unique keyword. Any object can look up the value of any variable in the registry using the keyword, but it doesn't have permission to change the value. In this way, variables can be exposed to a global space without the risk of being changed. If an object tries to look up a keyword that doesn't exist in the registry, the registry can return an error giving the calling object a chance to gracefully handle the lack of the variable it needs. Unfortunately, the XP registry would require an entire tutorial in and of itself. So instead, we're going to add a simulated registry right into our dialog player to hold our variables. To the dialog player's root, add a new basic node called simulated registry and attach a new script. This script will be pretty small. We only need one global variable, a dictionary called registry, and a public method called lookup. The lookup method is also very simple. It takes in the name of a variable as an input parameter. If the registry dictionary has the variable name as a key, it will return the value associated with the dictionary's key, otherwise it will return an empty string. At the moment, our registry is empty, so let's pop in a few test variables to use in our dialog. The test variable returns a string, this. The player level returns the player's level as an integer. The pi variable returns the pi constant. The date variable returns the date and time of the moment the registry is initialized and the system variable returns a string defining the system the Godot program is running on. For example, Windows, iOS, Android, or X11 for Linux. And that's it. Our super simple simulated registry is finished. Next, we have some work to do in the dialog player script. The first thing we need to do here is add a reference to the registry. Second, in the private method section, Add the inject variables function. This function takes in raw text from a node as input, replaces all the variables within variable tags with the variables values from the registry, and then returns the edited text. We will call the inject variables function in the play node function right after the story reader gets the raw text from the current node. Pass the raw text from the story reader into the inject variables function and we'll get back the text with all the variable tags replaced with variable values. Now let's get into the details of the inject variables function. We can have any number of variables in our dialog. First we need to know how many variables we'll be replacing. We can count the number of variable tags to get this number. Then we'll need a for loop to iterate over each of the variable tags in our text. We can use our friend getTaggedText to get the name of the variable between the variable tags. getTaggedText always returns the result of the first instance of the tag it finds, so when our variable tags get replaced by the variable value in the next loop, getTaggedText will always return the result of the next variable tag. With the name of the variable in hand, we can look up the variable's value with our registry's lookup function. Over the next few lines of code, we'll use the functions of the string class to erase the current variable tags from the text string and insert the value of the variable in its place. Keep in mind that it's important to cast the variable values to the string type before they can be inserted. This code loops over every variable tag in the raw text, replaces the variable tag with the variable's value, and finally returns the result. Believe it or not, we're done coding. Even I was surprised at how easy this was to implement. But we're not quite done yet. We need to add some variables to our story file to test our dialog player. Open the story file we made in the previous tutorials using the XP dialog system.
create a new dialog record and give it a unique name and description. Press edit and add start and end nodes with start and end tags. Then add some nodes with the speaker and dialog tags in the same manner as the previous tutorials. And wherever you want to inject a variable from the registry, simply include the variable's keyword name between start and end variable tags. Once you've created all your nodes, don't forget to link them together, then save and bake the story file over the old files. If we were to run this scene now, the dialog player would still load the previous test dialog record. Therefore, in the dialog player's ready function, change the dialog record passed to the play dialog function to our new variable injection dialog record. Now when we press F6 to run the scene, our dialog player will inject the variables from our registry into the dialog before displaying it to the screen. I think that's pretty cool, how about you? But we've only just scratched the surface. In the next tutorial, I'm going to divert from our original timetable to cover dialog branching due to popular demand. If you don't want to miss it, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when the next tutorial drops. If you're curious about me and what I do, head over to Twitter where I post devlogs and Instagram where I post about my life in Japan. As always, this tutorial project can be found on GitHub, all links below. I hope to see you again. Until then, happy devving!